acting. Uh, former Cardiff City chairman Peter Risdale has been disqualified from acting as a company director for seven and a half years after an investigation into financial irregularities concerning payments made to him by the club. Uh, nearly £350,000, which should have been paid to a company called WH Sports Group, was in fact paid into personal bank accounts in Mr Risdale's name. Now, to make some sense of this in the situation, very pleased we can, we can bring in financial expert Professor Tom Cannon from the University of uh, Liverpool, a professor of football finance, to, to word it more correctly. Good evening, uh, Tom. Are you well? Have you digested this news about Peter Risdale? Could you sort of put it into a kind of, kind of layman speak for us? Well, it's a very complicated situation, not least because he's saying that he's made a voluntary agreement and the insolvency service say he's been banned. So there is a big question about whether he's volunteered or whether he jumped or whether he's been pushed. Basically, the situation is that um, Peter, who is probably one of the world's great uh, communicators, is already communicating a very different position to the one that's being described in the insolvency service. And it's obviously we first came, I suppose, onto public eye, football fans of Leeds United, and we know about the financial problems there. The ban, Tom, uh, will bar him from acting as a company director until 2020, I presume, into his retirement at that point. Yeah, it's six, it's six and a half years, so it's quite a long ban. And also, his wife's been banned for two and a half years, so it's a, it's a family affair as far as that's concerned. And the ban, whether it's voluntary or whether it's compulsory, is actually takes him beyond, in a sense, what you would normally expect people to be playing this kind of role. But, of course, the big thing for Preston North End supporters is what's his position at Preston North End, because he's saying he's something called the director of football, uh, sorry, the chairman of football, which is, in a sense, um, sounds like the chairman of the club, but isn't, because he's saying, I'm not a director. So has he committed a crime against the laws of the land? Is there any kind of case to be, or allegedly any case to be, to be heard here? Well, in terms of the insolvency service, what the insolvency service are saying is that basically he, con he contravened the Companies Act. Basically, what, was, what you're supposed to do is if you're running a company and that company has an agreement with a client, in this case Cardiff City, and Cardiff City make payments, that those payments must go to the company and they must de be declared as revenues to the company. But he had them paid into a separate account and basically as far as the, re the insolvency service is concerned he didn't declare those earnings in the way that they believe he ought to have done hence the ban the issue to do with uh, Preston North End is more complex because this description of chairman of football uh, is a pretty tenuous one because I think he may well be vulnerable to be accused of being what's known as a shadow director which is um, a technical term which is quite important in this context. Tom, shadow director, it's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? I, on, a, on a wider issue, do you, a bugbear of mine with this, and, and we look at financial irregularities with a lot of clubs, you know, um, Portsmouth obviously being the, probably yeah. the, the primary case. It, do we have a problem in English football that the, the fit and proper persons test and the regulation of who and how uh, these finances are run, the, the, the details of it, the, the, the logistics of it all, are just not subjective uh, to strong enough regulation? Absolutely, you put your finger on it. I mean, the truth is, it's not just um, Portsmouth, it's right through football. We have something called the fit and proper director test, and it basically doesn't seem to bite where it should bite. If you're a fan, if you're a player, if you're the manager of a club, you look at the criteria for the people who control your club and you turn around and you say well actually it, it is right they should be subject to pretty tough scrutiny and in the past that scrutiny hasn't been particularly tough and Peter in a sense illustrates a lot of the problems because you know if he's got it wrong at the Cardiff City it won't be the first time you know there have been questions about his role from living the dream at Leeds United, which meant the club ended up with a hundred million pounds worth of debt. So it's not, you know, this isn't somebody who you don't know. But there he is. is so, Tom, are we moving anywhere closer to that situation though, where football business is run more akin to people aspiring for a productive business, or will it always be reckless and and subject to massive debt because of that kind of need to win and to to beat your competitors? Well, there's always an element in which. To some degree, the fans don't help because 
what happens is that the fans get very excited about somebody who claims, and there's an awful lot of, it's surprisingly easy to claim you're a millionaire if you're taking over a club like Preston, uh, Port Vale recently, or a billionaire if you're trying to take over a club like Liverpool. And all too often, the fans get very excited. But actually, when you start in picking it he isn't a billionaire and he yeah. wasn't a but it's, billionaire. Well, it's, it's a case that it's, it's not actually spending money for the on the club's behalf he's actually paying he's getting somebody to pay himself isn't it that's the, that's the biggest problem in this case absolutely and one of the great myths of english football is that the owners and the directors take nothing out of the club mm. yeah. don't forget since the premiership was created owners owners have taken 500 million pounds wow. out of the Premiership, and it's not just the likes of John Hall and David Moores and all these other people. Wasn't the there a recent story about the, the Blackpool chairman? The Blackpool chairman, after they were in the Premier League, he took dividends Carl out. Austin, was it? Yeah, he took dividends out of, of something like 15, 16 million out of the 18 million pound profit. Well, gents, we'll never get to the end. I think of all the financial irregularities in this one section, so we have to hold fire there. Tom Cannon from uh, University of Liverpool, football finance professor. We appreciate your time tonight and enjoy the rest of your evening. Real pleasure talking to you. And it, the thing that's always amazing is how astute the people like the players and the journalists are compared to some of the people who run the clubs. <laughs> <laughs> well, appreciate the compliments, though. You make no, it a lot easier for us to digest, which is uh, always okay. appreciated. You look after yourself. Bye-bye. You too. Thanks, Tom.